Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Skylar Cunningham of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. Today's webinar is part of a webinar series leading up to the annual TWI Summit and Kata Summit taking place February 17th through the 21st, 2020 in Austin, Texas. Learn more about what we call Skills Week by visiting www.leanfrontiers.com forward slash Skills Week. Due to the short nature of our presentation, we will not be fielding questions. Today's session is being recorded. Look for an email within a few hours after the session ends for a link to the recording. Let me introduce today's presenter, Dorsey Sherman. Dorsey is the owner of Model Consulting. She works with organizations to achieve their potential through continuous improvement using Toyota Kata strategy development and leadership coaching. She is pursuing her leadership coaching certificate at Case Western Reserve University is also set to host KataCon 6 in Austin this February. I'll give it over to Dorsey. Thanks, Skylar. Hi, everybody. Um, as Skylar said, my name is Dorsey Sherman, and my company is called Model Consulting, and Model actually means pattern in French. So for those of you that are Toyota Kata enthusiasts, you will understand the importance of the word pattern. Um, all about creating patterns and habits to achieve results. So today I'm going to talk about using the coaching kata in a different way to improve relationships, with, which might sound a little crazy, but I'll get into that in a minute and, and also get results. So um, first of all, I, I have got the coaching kata up here. Um, for those of you not familiar, Toyota kata is really comprised of two parts, the coaching kata and the improvement kata. Um, and they're usually coupled together. The intention of the coaching kata is by asking these questions, you teach the improvement kata. So the four-step improvement kata pattern is understanding your challenge, grasping your current condition, establishing a target condition, and experimenting forward. So if you're a learner or an improver or a coachee, you're in this improvement kata section focusing on learning scientific thinking and improving your process. If you're in the coach role, you're using this pattern of coaching kata's questions. Kata means a practice routine. You're asking these questions again and again, and with the answer, you're assessing the skill and the scientific thinking of your learner, and then either giving instruction, making corrections, asking deeper questions, because your goal is to teach them scientific thinking and the improvement kata pattern. So those two things are paired in order to do that. And so, but what I want to talk about today is using coaching kata for different reasons, to improve and create relationships and live happily ever after. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's not what I'm going to talk about today. It's not those kind of relationships, but really relationships at work with your team um, and how using these same questions with a different intention um, can have a broader impact. So the typical context is a coach and a learner are looking at a storyboard um, and they're asking those questions, the target condition is really focused on metrics and process characteristics and a pattern of work and run charts. But those same questions can step into a broader world of coaching, a broader definition of coaching and use the same script or with slight, massaging the word slightly and with a slightly different intention. When the intention really being to develop people to have them set their own goals for um, individuals to be empowered and motivated and inspired to solve their own problems. So in being in that space with your team from a perspective of um, listening and um, development and empathy and validation really develops relationships. So I'm going to talk about that a little more and relationships create results. So I'll show that link to you in a minute. So in that order, so I think um, most people enter into Lean and enter into Toyota Kata with a focus on results and improvement, and we're going to make our business better. We're going to get um, the bottom line that we're looking for, but um, to be the most effective is to focus on the people first and the results come second. So I just wanted to highlight in from the Toyota Kata practice guide, um, these this section about the role of the coach. So in this bottom paragraph, to help the learner become more proficient in using the scientific pattern of improvement kata to make it a habit, 
The coach pays attention to the learner's current application of the improvement kind of pattern, sets specific goals for improving targeted aspects, and the coach keeps the learner moving ahead in skill development. So again, I just want to reiterate that that role of the coach in a coaching kata is all about teaching. And I want to talk about coaching a little more broadly today and give some definitions. So especially because that word coach is used very frequently and in a lot of different contexts, it can be unclear what we're talking about. So this is the different ways that I think about it. So the first thing um, is to tell. And so you might think, well, what does telling have to do with coaching? Well, many people think they're coaching and they're really imparting information. They're transferring knowledge. They're giving um, directive and telling people what to do, but are calling that coaching. Um, and to be honest, that's what I was doing for a long time. I called myself a lean coach. And, but really I was saying, here's how you do an A3. You know, here's how you understand your current condition. Here's how you do a run chart. Here's how you go to Gemba and observe your current condition. So I would, so some people would call that coaching and maybe it is, but there's an element of telling. I'm telling you what to do and I'm teaching you how to be effective. The other thing that's often confused with coaching is giving feedback. So maybe you see some inappropriate behavior um, from a leadership perspective and you said, he really needs coaching. Um, but what we're really talking about is specific feedback on someone's performance or behavior. Um, and so we're saying, hey, this is what I saw. Um, this is the impact it's having on the organization and here's how you need to change. That is what I would call feedback, which is distinct from coaching. Um, the other kind of along that spectrum of coaching is mentoring and coaching and mentoring is another words that are often used together. Mentoring in my point of view is it's really giving advice. It's going off of your experience. You know, maybe you're a more seasoned professional um, and you're giving advice and counsel and kind of helping someone through their career, through a difficult situation, through mentoring them. Coaching for compliance. So this is a word that um, this and the other one I'm going to use called coaching for compassion. Coaching for compliance is, again, as, as Skylar said, I'm pursuing my leadership coaching certificate in Case Western. And they talk about coaching for compliance is really about closing a gap in performance. So um, maybe someone needs help with a promotion or um, they're trying to achieve a very specific goal. You, you're, the goal in coaching for compliance is fixing someone. So you're trying to get them to um, adhere to specific organizational requirements. So this could be like your performance evaluation. So maybe you need to do better at delegating. You need to do better at communicating. You need to do better at um, presentation skills. And I'm going to coach you in how to do that. But that's really coaching for compliance to a specific level of performance. Coaching to teach a skill is where I would put the coaching kata. I would put athletic coaching here, kind of um, as well, um, music, you know, teachers and that kind of thing. You're coaching to teach a skill. And by that, I mean, um, similar to what I talked about with the coaching kata, you're asking the questions or watching someone play um, and or watching them play their instrument or watching them do soccer drills. And then you're comparing it to a reference in your head of what that should look like for that individual, you know, whether um, you want whatever level of performance you're looking for. And then based on that gap between what you see and your reference of where they should be, you give instructions or guidance on how to increase the skill. The last part that I wanna talk about today is something called coaching for compassion, coaching with compassion. And what that really means is coaching to inspire and to motivate and to empower. And by empower, I mean for an individual to take their own power back to solve their own problems. And so it's not, um, there's no agenda necessarily. The agenda is really set by the person being coached. There's no um, teaching going on. You know, I'm not trying to teach you um, a certain model or a way to um, behave or act. I'm not trying to fix you in any way. There's no standard that we're trying to reach. It's all about 
um, finding your way um, to develop and move forward. And so helping find your own way and inspire. That's called coaching for compassion. And so what it really does is it, it builds, it's a place of curiosity and a place of support and help and curiosity and um, safety and a place to really develop a relationship and help someone grow. Um, and so what I'm going to suggest is we can use the coaching kata in that space of coaching for compassion. Um, that's what I'm going to talk more about today. So there's a model um, to use this um, in coaching for compassion called the intentional conversation model. And I'm going to walk you through that right now. The first thing is to clarify intention. So if someone um, say comes into your office and is upset or, you know, wants to talk about something, it's sort of to understand um, what would you like from me today? And, and, and how can I help you? And is this something you just want to vent to me? Or is this a coaching conversation? After that, it's really understanding what's, it's called what's so or what's the goal, you know, what's happening and, and what is the goal you're trying to achieve? And then closing the gap to say, well, what have you already tried? What have you um, thought of? Um, what progress have you already made? The next part is something called enrolling in possibility. And what that question is kind of an emotional one to say, what would it feel like if you achieved the goal? So say someone wants to figure out a better work-life balance or something, or they want to be a more effective leader, they want to deal with a problem employee um, or somebody that's unmotivated. What would it feel like to really solve this situation? And what that gets to is some positive emotion that then becomes the carrot. So that becomes the motivation to um, go through kind of the hard process of change. The next is what are the showstoppers? So what's standing in your way? What do you think would keep you from taking action? And then looking for commitment. So what do you think your next step is? Um, you know, what are some specific actions you're going to take? And when can we talk about that? So that's really this intentional conversation model. So this should look familiar. It very much did to me. If you're a Toyota Kata practitioner and you've ever looked at that coaching Kata card, these questions are similar. So this is the coaching Kata. Um, card. And what I did was just transpose, transpose these same questions into that same model so we could compare them. So the coaching kind of starts with, of course, what is your target condition? What is your actual condition? And then we turn the card over to further understand the actual condition. We say, you know, what was the last step? Um, what did you expect? Because we want the scientific hypothesis. What did you expect from taking that step? And then what actually happened and what did you learn? Now we flip the card back over to say, what obstacles do you think are preventing you from reaching your target condition? Which one are you addressing now? And then what is your next step? Again, asking for a prediction. What do you expect as a result of taking that step? And how quickly can we go and see what you have learned? Um, which I love that question. When can we see what you have learned? Um, and that's the coaching kata. So I want to compare these two models and show you the similarities where the coaching kata is really starting with what's your target condition and what's your actual condition. The intentional conversation is saying, what's so, you know, we're kind of like what's happening and what's the goal. So it's really a combination of those two questions. Now, here's where I want to talk about intention. If I have my coaching kata hat on, my intention of asking the target condition and the actual condition is to understand what you know about your process. So what I want to know is when, when I ask you what's your target condition and you say, well, well, so I'll say, what's your target condition? Well, the goal is we're going to increase, we're going to increase it by 50%. It's like, Okay, so what that tells me, if I hear that answer, my reference on what I want to hear on target condition is I want to hear that they understand the word condition, which means I want to understand how the process is operating, not just a number, not just an outcome metric, but so I would want an outcome metric, a process metric, a pattern of work, process characteristics for both the target and the actual condition. And so if I hear what's your target condition, we want to increase by 50%, that tells me, oh, this learner doesn't understand the word condition. They don't, they don't understand that their target is actually a mode of, op of how the process is gonna operate. And so I know I need to work on that with my learner. 
Now, let's switch over to my intentional conversation model. If I'm asking what's so and what's the goal, first of all, those questions are very powerful when, when applied to a non-process related conversation because people haven't even often thought about what's the goal, what do I really want? You know, they're so stuck in um, everything that's going wrong and the emotion and the behavior and the blaming the other person and whatever it is to say, Usually you maybe get the what's so, but what do you want or what's the goal or what would it, what's, what are you trying to achieve or questions they haven't considered. So with intentional conversation, my intention now is to just get the person thinking to kind of unlock, um, you know, go out of maybe um, a complaining mode and into some deeper questions that empower um, and can help someone feel like they can actually move forward. Um, so the next part is, um, close. So intentional conversation, close the gap. Coaching kata is what did, what did you try last? And they're really very similar question. Intentional conversation. You're like, well, what have you already tried? What have you already done? You know, and what, what happened as a result of that? What, how did, what did you learn? Same thing with the coaching kata. What steps have you already tried? Again, with coaching kata, what I'm looking for when I ask that question is I'm looking at things like, did you actually make a prediction? Did you make a prediction with metrics? Um, did you actually execute the step? Was there a difference between what you expected and what you learned? Because that's, uh, or excuse me, between what expected and what happened. If there was a difference, that's when the learning happened. So I want to hear if you understand that. Um, but here I'm really just looking for you to reflect an intentional conversation. I really just want you to reflect on what have you already tried? What have you already thought about and worked on? So here's here's a difference. In the intentional conversation model, there's something called enrolling in possibility, and this is that carrot. This is the feeling part that's an emotional question. How would it feel um, to solve this problem, to achieve this goal? You know, and the idea is that positive emotion, typically it's a positive emotion, is the motive is um, the positive emotion is the motivation to go forward with the process of change. And that's not included in the coaching kata at all, but I kind of think it should be so. Um, okay, so then we go to obstacles or showstopper. So what's keeping you from working according to the target condition? What are the obstacles? And then what do you think is standing in your way of taking action on this issue? And then finally creating commitment or getting some specific next steps. What can we see? what you have learned. So I want to give you an example of using these coaching kata totally decoupled from the improvement kata process. And my intention is not to teach. My intention is not to, to improve a process. My intention is to listen and to validate and to empathize and to empower and motivate and develop and to create a relationship with the person coming into my office, okay? And I can use these coaching kata questions because I have them because I'm gonna assume we're already using them and we're applying them in relation to process improvement. And so we're gonna use them in this conversation as well. So here's the scenario, Clay, your head of operations comes into your office and complains and says, Jeff, who's another manager, is driving me crazy. So he's very upset. Clay's very upset and comes into your office complaining. So let's try and use the coaching kata questions in this scenario. So the first question is really how, so let's just assume there's kind of a venting session that happens. That's typically been my experience. There's a big um, venting and complaining session. And then um, um, and then you say, well, how would you like it to be with you and Jeff? What's the goal? Well, I want to like my work. I want him to respect me. I want to feel like I'm part of a team and that we're on the same team. So I want to feel like, hey, my coworker and I are connected. Well, what's happening now? So you may have already gotten this in terms of this initial event, but it's like, well, he doesn't help me cover breaks. He makes mistakes that impact my team. He doesn't help. When there's a problem, he just stands there and acts like he knows everything. So now we have the edges of our coaching session. We know um, we want to have teamwork. So this this guy, Clay, he wants teamwork. He wants to have mutual respect. He wants to feel like he's part of a team. But right now, feels like he doesn't have that at all. He has all these other issues. So then we go to the next, the next thing. So part of the coaching, Kata, you say, well, um, what was your last step? So you could say it just like that, or you could kind of condense those questions. What have you already tried? You know, what have you already done to address this situation or get closer to your goal? Well, 
I glared at him at the last staff meeting. That's kind of a joke, but often people haven't taken any action to address the situation. So it's good to pull that out. I already told him he was being a jerk. I also refused to let my guys cover for him since he wasn't helping us cover. And I complained about him to Kim, a coworker. So again, my intention isn't to make sure these are scientific steps. It's really to force some reflection on, um, well, how, how did that work? How effective was that? It's getting all the kind of noise and mess out of someone's head and um, getting some clarity around it. So what happened as a result of taking those steps in terms of did it get you closer to the goal of having this team relationship with Jeff? Well, nothing. So now this is the question that's a little off. What would it feel like to be on the same page as Jim? Um, sigh of relief. Well, it'd be so great to know that we have each other's back. And that's kind of that carrot that like, oh, I, you know, now I've got somebody because they're excited and motivated to change and take some steps forward and change because they have the motivation of this positive feeling on the other end. So what's keeping you from acting? That's that obstacle question or the showstopper question. Well, I don't want to get in a fight with him. I know if I approach him, he'll be really angry and complain about me to everyone else, which is which is an assumption, but those are the obstacles. And okay, so what do you think is your next step? Well, I'm going to talk to him and use the training we just had on giving feedback. Facts, business impact and ideas for change. Great, can we connect in a week and see what you've learned? So this is a very like boiled down and simple example, and it doesn't necessarily isn't going to go this smoothly or this um, linearly, um, like step by step by step. Um, maybe you're jumping all over the place. But the point is you kind of my point is, is that with the coaching kata, you already have a framework to address some broader problems. But to do it from a perspective of listening and validating and helping someone create their own solutions. And um, the goal is, of course, let them do the, their own thinking, influencing the thought process. Um, but you're not focusing on Clay and Jeff and like, well, what did he do? And why did he say that? And what's the history of it? But really asking questions to have them reflect on learning and problem solving themselves. So the impact on the culture is it's really the impact on a relationship and then a broader culture is it's a way to demonstrate that you care about someone, to build trust, to create a safe space, to be vulnerable, to assist in creating solutions. And I love this lighting a fire with within, a flame within instead of a fire underneath. So it's not this directive or authoritative or commanding approach, but a way to ask questions to connect with people. A little bit about a coaching mindset. Um, so first is the idea that um, in order to um, ask these questions with a different intention, so you're not asking to fix someone and you're not asking so that they stop bugging you and you're not asking the question so that um, um, to teach them anything. It's really to develop and empower and motivate and inspire them. So with that perspective, there are some thoughts that make good coaches. And what I wanna say is that thoughts impact emotions and then emotions create behavior. So sometimes we start with behaviors, but it can be helpful to go backwards into mindset and thought. So the first the first one is curiosity. So it's really approaching this from a perspective of I wonder. I wonder um, I wonder instead of going at things with judgment and this is what someone should do, but really from a perspective of curiosity. I wonder why this is happening this way or I wonder how this would work. Mine for gold, don't dig for dirt. So this came from um this came from uh, um, Andrew Carnegie. Sorry, I couldn't, I've blanked on his name. Andrew Carnegie, who developed all these millionaires in the 1930s who um he had like 50 millionaires working for him. He said, well, how did you do it? And they said, well, in order to, when you go into the mines, in order to get any gold, you have to get pounds and pounds of, of dirt out of the way. But you don't go into the mine looking for dirt. You go in looking for gold um, and focus on that. So it's really focusing on the positive of a situation instead of everything that's wrong with the person um, that you're working with. If you're familiar with Carol Dweck's work on mindset, the idea of a growth mindset is the belief that others can change and that skills and behaviors can be learned among everyone. So if you're a person who thinks people don't change, I just had this conversation at Thanksgiving. If you're a person that thinks people don't change, they're just the way we are and they're never going to change. 
then you're probably not going to be super effective at coaching because that's kind of the whole point of coaching is really by asking questions and and developing some self-awareness um, and motivation, you actually can change and make improvements in your life. Um, so growth mindset is another um, kind of grounding thought as a coach. So coaching is a process, not an event. It's your job to develop your team. So many people don't think this, you know, they really think it's my job to get results. It's my job as a leader to, um, get outcomes, get results, to remove barriers, to help people so they can add value on the front line and not deal with these problems. It's my job to solve the problems for them. Um, and if you think that, you know, that can be limiting to a coaching mindset. The agenda comes from the coachee. So the coachee or the learner, the improver, they're doing 80% of the talking in this scenario. And you're speaking relatively little. And your goal is to create a safe learning environment. So those thoughts, what I'm saying is those thoughts create emotions that are open and supportive and helping and appreciative. And those emotions create behaviors, which are listening, eye contact, asking open-ended questions, and, and validating. Some obstacles to coaching are really that it's um, telling is faster. So it's a lot faster when someone comes into your office complaining to say, um, either don't talk to me about it, fix it on your own, or here's how you need to fix it, or I will fix it for you. Maybe those are like the three primary things that we do when people come to us with problems. And that's a lot faster uh, in the short term, I would say, um, maybe not in the long term. So. Um, the other thing is, you know, the answer, I know what he should do. Why not just tell him? I've told him a hundred times they aren't coachable. My job is to remove barriers, um, et cetera. Another obstacle to coaching is really a lack of motivation. So it's really not believing. Anytime you're striving for something that you don't actually believe in, but is more connected to what you think you should do. So coaching is very trendy and popular, I think. And so if you don't actually believe in it, then that can be, um, a barrier to being effective and it requires practice so if you try one coaching and try to ask questions and have a really hard time you know and then quit you're never going to improve it's really a skill um, that requires practice and some tricks to improve are reminders content and support but the thing i want to connect to as we end is it relates to relationships is this. So these are the elements of employee engagement. So job satisfaction, commitment, retention, and discretionary effort. Those um, employee engagement is impacted by two things. One is perceived organizational support. And so what that means is I believe that the organization I work for cares about me and is looking out for me. And if I believe that, then the norm of reciprocity holds that I will then give back to them. They care about me, I care about them. And so that leads to satisfaction, commitment, retention, and effort. Well, how do you impact perceived organizational support? If I'm a leader, I can't control if um, someone thinks the organization cares about them. Well, the biggest factor impacting perceived organizational support is this leader member exchange. So this is the, the relationship between an employee, the perceived relationship, quality of the relationship between a leader and their employee. That's what impacts perceived organizational support and directly impacts satisfaction, commitment, retention, and going beyond and beyond. Those things combined impact organizational performance. So when we're using Toyota Kata or Lean or anything else to go to this back end and starting with performance, when really you can go all the way back to that leader member exchange, all the way back to that relationship as being the foundation that impacts engagement, that impacts performance. And what I'm really saying today is how do we use the coaching kata as an already in place framework and script and to kind of try it on with a different intention um, in order to develop that relationship with your teams. So, if you want to try, consider how you can use that same CK script as a starting point, but not because you have to, um, but really the three things that have to be in place for changing any soft skill are motivation, practice, and feedback. So do you really want to? Is this connect to the leader you want to be? And if so, how can you practice? And what is the support and feedback that you can get along the way in, in order to try it? Um, and I'd love to hear from you and hear how it's going. And you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and here's my email, or of course you can give me a call. And I think I'll just end with 
the idea of coaching with compassion is to really inspire, motivate, empower, um, and not teach or give feedback or tell or fix or any of those things, but to use those questions to create a relationship can, can improve long-term results. Thanks. Thank you, Dorsey. Thanks for facilitating our session today. Just a reminder that today's session was recorded. You will receive an email shortly with a link to view the recording. Please share this throughout your organization and perhaps even use it as a lunch and learn for your team. Please join us February 17th through the 21st in Austin, Texas for the TWI Summit and Kata Summit. Thanks again, Dorsey, and thanks to everyone who participated in today's session. Have a great day.